Most people go for a walk, a jog, or even grab a bike just to burn a few calories. Michigan has been on the top 10 list for obesity for the past few years, so grabbing a bike wouldn't be a bad idea. On the Detroit Riverfront, bicycles are available for everyone to enjoy. But what if you can lose weight by just playing a video game? Or what if your job used video games to train you? Video games have been a way to compete or just to hang out with friends for the past 30 years. Could they be the next big thing? Our very own Tyra Snyder has the scoop on how gaming systems are invading the real world. Video games used to be the reason for getting grounded, but now they're changing the way we do things. Serious games are in a technological breakthrough, but how does this affect you? It started in the late 70s with a popular game called Pong, where a dot bounced back and forth against two moving bars, but games are being used more and more these days within professional fields for a variety of reasons. Many companies are using them as a way to train new employees. The military used them for different training tactics and situational events. Even some schools are incorporating video games for driver's training. The most recent, though, is a game that gives a helping hand to staying in shape, and it's called Wii Fit. Well, I think it's a very good game that goes with a system that really caters to the casual gamer and other people who aren't really used to games. Nintendo is a revolution in the gaming industry and has been a leader of it for years. Now, with the new Nintendo Wii, they are getting gamers to their feet with this innovative exercise program. Well, it's not just normal game where you sit at home, sit on the couch with a controller. I mean, you got the balance board that doubles as a scale to track your fitness level and what you're doing in everyday activities. It has definite advantages to what it does. Many other companies are starting to see the light on this revolution also. The very popular Ubisoft is releasing a game that bases itself on getting users to stop smoking. It uses the Alan Carr's Easy Way Method, a way to overcome mentally what your body does not want. There are other games of this kind also. Nintendo, once again, is on the top with their own handheld Nintendo DS. Some of the most popular games for this little machine involve arithmetic, logistics, and many other school subjects. Big Brain Academy is one of these games. It tests you and evaluates your scores to give you a rough idea of your IQ. Based on that information, it gives you the option to work towards a goal with tests and quizzes that are fun yet, at the same time, help you exercise your brain. Like the DS, you have Brain Age, or we have We Fit. It's just different type of activities for stuff to, for people to use. The government has even jumped on this bandwagon using simulators and video games to strengthen and train our nation's military. Games like America's Army for the original Xbox from Microsoft was created entirely by a team consisting of volunteers from the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps. The first 30 minutes of playing is strictly a training program for the game itself to ensure that its users are ready to handle the lifelike situations that will be presented. Serious games from a standpoint of an actual gamer, they're definitely not geared towards us. However, for people, for the gaming industry to succeed, we need to bring in new people who haven't. And Serious Games is definitely a good outlet to do that. Who would have thought that video games could take you from the couch to the front lines? I'm Tara Snyder reporting for Specs Howard School Broadcast Art. You can't be afraid of heights or large bodies of water if you want to appreciate our next Specs Profile topic. Fasten your seatbelts, grab a life jacket, and stay tuned. Fasten your safety belt. It's life or death. There are so many things to do here at Heart Plaza and on the Riverwalk. There's a different festival almost every week, but of course, there are limits. But one thing you can't do is fly a plane. This weekend, thousands of spectators enjoy watching professionals show their skill during the Red Bull Air Race. This weekend, the city braced itself to showcase its first Red Bull Air Race World Series. You'll be amazed by the awesome skills of these pilots. This is 
an exciting time as Detroit's riverfront is alive and full of energy from Abu Dhabi to London to Stockholm. Detroit is one of only 10 cities in the world to host the Red Bull Air Race World Series. The world knows Detroit as the heart of the car industry, with GM's headquarters as the backdrop to this event. Most people don't realize Detroit is also the birthplace and hometown of aviator Charles Lindbergh, the first pilot to cross the Atlantic nonstop. Detroit is the third destination in this competition and one of only two stops in the U.S. Here and welcome to uh, Detroit Red Bull Air Race World Series and hopefully you have some fun. I hope you get a chance to check out the race and it's really exciting. With Windsor, Ontario right across the river, it makes Detroit the first city to feature an international race. Fans can view the event from two countries on both sides of the river. Only the most skilled pilots can brave speeds over 230 miles per hour while navigating an aerial race track. The course is filled with 65-foot-tall pylons that are used to create patterns where pilots weave in and round at top speeds. It's been a mix of sun and clouds. Right now it's beautiful out, but the weekend weather has been full of surprises. High winds during qualifying rounds canceled the rounds yesterday. <laughs> I, I can't say I'm. I can't say I'm real delighted to have come down here and uh, and braved the crowds and gotten sunburned and uh, spent my money to get in the gate to have it canceled. I'm a pilot, and I wouldn't fly in this wind. Refunds were given for the canceled races, and fans returned Sunday ready for the mind-blowing races promised by crew members who spoke with Specs profile during rehearsals before the weekend. The pilots are going to fly through this four-mile course at a speed of over 230 miles per hour. Probably the man that I root for the most, I'd have to say, honestly, is Kirby. I mean, Kirby's a friend of mine, and uh, we've been friends for over 10 years, but also fellow American Mike Mangold is a good buddy of mine. He's won the World Series two times. Over 41,000 tickets were sold quickly in Detroit. Fans down here can't wait to see what's in store. I mean, I think these Red Bull Air races are awesome. They're really unique and, you know, full of excitement. Planes made knife-edged churns and quick maneuvers over the four-mile course. The Red Bull Air Race has thrilled the city with its high speeds and adrenaline pumping competition. From Detroit's Riverwalk, I'm Nellie Shelton reporting for Spex Howard School of Broadcast Arts. I'm Carl Hall. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Spex Profile. Detroit, 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 Detroit. 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 